Welcome back, and welcome back, Amanda. I'm going to talk you through how to set up the Certi Fiber Pro for a successful measurement. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a project. What's a project? Hmm. Think of a project like a folder. So one of the great advantages with Versive compared to our previous generation of testers is you can create multiple projects or multiple jobs. In an ideal world, this tester would go to one installation and stay there until the job was complete. In reality, this tester is going to hop from site to site to site. So maybe one day it's in Edmonds, the next day it's in Mukilteo, and then it's downtown in Seattle. You can actually create three different setups, three different projects, so you can just hand that tester off to the next technician, so you simply change the project and they're good to go. This is actually a Taptive interface, and we call it Taptive because if you want to change something, you just tap it. So Amanda, where you see project, go ahead and tap it for me. And on the screen there, you'll see change project and we want to create a new project and we'll call it Edmonds. Nice thing is with this instrument you do get a full QWERTY keyboard. So here's our project and we're all set up to go. Now because we got the Certi Fiber Pro in module in the back, we've already got our basic configuration there. It's set up for smart loop and everything else. So to change our test setup, what are we going to do? Let's tap where it says Smart Remote. Okay, so here now we see the basic setup configuration of our instrument. And looking at the instrument here, um, we see that we're using a Certi Fiber Pro module. And the next thing we've got down here is our test type. Go ahead and tap test type for me, Amanda. And you get four test types here. So you can use this tester in different modes. There is Smart Remote, where we're using the remote tester there, and we're testing two fibers at the same time. The other one on here is also is Loopback. Loopback, you're typically not going to use, and that's exactly what it suggests. You're gonna loop back the fiber at the far end, and it comes back into the instrument. There is also Far End Source, where we can just turn that into a simple source. So if we wanted to measure just one fiber, we can now measure one fiber. And unlike the previous DTX, we can measure both wavelengths on one fiber at the same time. That's really important when you're doing single mode. And then finally, there's Fiber Inspector. And that just leads me on to one of the most important things about fiber testing. This is the optional camera that you can get that's gonna allow us to inspect these test reference cords on the table. If you don't have any form of fiber inspection device, you are not gonna be successful because you're gonna be using one of these click clean pens but you're gonna clean it, but you don't know whether it's clean or not. We have a nice separate video later on about the F5-7000 and inspection and cleaning, and we'll cover that a little bit later. But I don't want to dismiss the importance of inspection and cleaning as well. So that would be your fiber inspection setup. We're gonna leave it in Smart Remote. So Amanda, tap Smart Remote for me. That's fantastic. Looking down on the next option here, we have Bidirectional. Now this can be an emotive decision. What I would say here is, look at your test specification. If your test specification calls out bi-directional, turn this on. Just be aware of, none of the cabling standards in ISO or TIA require bi-directional testing, but your vendor may or your consultant may, so always look to your test specification. So our next selection is fiber type. Go ahead and tap fiber type, Manda. And if you've seen our other video on the DSX-5000, this may seem very familiar. And that's one of the advantages in using the, the Versive mainframe is you have that common user interface. It becomes very familiar to you to use really quickly. So looking at the screen here, we put the three most common ones that people will use today. If you want more, go ahead and tap more. And just like our DSX-5000 video that we shot the other day, we see the very same various options, generic, custom, and we do have a manufacturer's library, but the vast majority of people will tap generic. So go ahead and tap generic for me. And in here, we see our standard options for OM1 through OM4, OS1, OS2. We're gonna select OM3. Go ahead and select OM3 for me. Now, that does impact your measurement in the following way. So just like that DSX-5000 video we did with MVP, the nominal velocity of propagation, which helps determine the length. On here, this is the same thing, but it said it's refractive index. And so when you change that cable type, it is gonna impact the length reported on here. So just be aware that the, your settings in the instrument here for cable type, make sure you have the right refractive index. 
So our next option on here to select is our test limit. Go ahead and tap the test limit for me, Amanda. And just like our copper testing, we have given you some most of the common options that are on there. Now you could be testing ISO, you could be testing TIA, make sure you look to your test specification. Now again, that's one of the advantages of setting up the projects is you can do that in a calm office and set it all up so the technician on site knows that they're testing to the correct test limit. Go ahead and tap more for me. And again, we see the same folders, TIA, ISO and everything else. Go ahead and tap TIA for me. And because we selected a multi-mode cable, we get a multi-mode option. If you wanted the TIA option for single mode testing, first select a single mode cable and then you would get that single mode option here on the test limit. So we're going to use the TIA 568C multi-mode. Go ahead and tap that for me. So our next option on here, Amanda, is our reference method type. This has to be the most single cause of phone calls coming into the technical assistance center. If you are certifying a cabling system for a warranty and you're going from patch panel to patch panel, you should be doing the one jumper reference. Failing to do a one jumper reference can result in the rejection of your cabling warranty. Go ahead and tap that one jumper reference for me. Now we've come somewhat simplified this compared to our previous test of the DTX, so everything is on one screen here. So now here we can put our jumper method, the number of connections, and the number of splices. And because we selected the TIA limit, when we increase the number of connections on here, that's going to increase our loss budget. It's going to increase our test limit. So this is a very important screen to get right here. Amanda, go ahead and change the jumper reference to two for me. Let's see what happens. And tap save. Oh, we got a warning. Absolutely, because doing the one jumper reference is so critical, we're going to give you a warning that says, are you sure you want to do a two jumper reference? Because this may invalidate your cabling warranty application. So go ahead and tap OK for me. And we'll change it back to one. So go ahead and change it back to one for me. All right, that's our setup for fiber testing. So with that said, go ahead and tap save for me, Amanda. And that's our test setup configuration done. Just one more thing that we want to do. We want to pre-configure our cable IDs because we know from interviews with contractors, having to rework the cable IDs back in the office is something that happens very common. So go ahead and tap new ID for me. Perfect. And we're going to create a very simple cable ID scheme. So Amanda, I'm going to get you to type in 01A for me. Okay, and then tap underneath there for the next one. And we're gonna change that to 12B. So take it out totally and change it to 12B. Okay, now we have a review option on here. So go ahead and tap review for me. Oh, I got another warning. I haven't actually assigned this cable ID to a test sequence. So go ahead and tap okay for me. So on the screen here, you'll see all the very different measurements that this can do. The one that we want to select is the loss testing. So go ahead and tap the uh, little square box where the loss testing is. There you go, perfect. Now tap review. Okay, so now we get to see the review. Now you'll notice here that it goes 01A, 01B. If you were doing a normal sequence, the next one would jump to 01C. But because we configured the sequence in advance, it's smart enough now to go to 02A. This really speeds up the testing, makes it very rapid. So that's our test setup complete. Now you can do that in the tester here in advance, or you could use our Linkware Live cloud service. If you have Linkware Live Professional, you can configure all of this, including the cable IDs, up in the cloud, back at your office, in your truck, or in your hotel. And then when Amanda is in the field and she connects to Linkware Live and synchronizes, it will download those setups into the instruments. 